inside the Great Pyramid of Khufu. We found a corridor behind the main entrance of the pyramid. Carved from the bedrock of the Egyptian plateau, this great sphinx of Giza has guarded the pyramids for ages. But amidst the sands and shadows, a shocking mystery has just emerged. A hidden tunnel concealed within the very heart of the Sphinx and evading discovery for centuries. Now armed with cutting edge technology and unwavering determination, scientists have just cracked the code to unlock the mysterious tunnel hidden inside Egypt's ancient Sphinx. What shocking secrets did they discover? Join us as we explore how scientists have finally unlocked the secret tunnel inside Egypt's ancient Sphinx. Unraveling Ancient Egyptian Secrets About 2,500 years ago, the Greek historian Herodotus, the world's first foreign correspondent, visited this site. Local villagers and guides told him that he could find the tomb of a king buried deep beneath the Giza Plateau. Have you ever heard about the mysterious Osiris shaft tucked away on the Giza Plateau? It's like a hidden gem amidst the towering Great Pyramids and the puzzling Sphinx. While the spotlight shone brightly on the grand monuments, the Osiris shaft patiently waited for its moment to shine. But this wasn't just any ordinary hole in the ground. It held the secrets of ancient Egyptian civilization and their religious practices waiting to be unraveled. It's interesting to imagine this place quietly existing since the late 19th century, overshadowed by the pyramids and sphinx that captured explorers' attention. Yet, hidden beneath the surface, the Osiris shaft harbored its own captivating story, one that demanded patience to uncover fully. In the 1990s, it was a time of change for the Osiris shaft. Zahi Hawass is a familiar name to many. He recognized the importance of shining a light on this overlooked treasure. You know, Susie, it's amazing because this is the first time that they excavate underneath 100 feet in water. Before, I excavate on sand and dirt. And also at the same time, I discovered that this is what Herodotus talked about. And I found that this is the tomb of Osiris. Let's go and see what we're talking about. Under his guidance, a careful exploration commenced, peeling back the layers of its complex architecture. What they uncovered was nothing short of amazing, evidence of the depth of Egyptian religious beliefs and their remarkable engineering skills. However, delving into the heart of the Osiris shaft was no easy feat. The team encountered a terrible challenge, removing the water that had flooded its lower levels, particularly the third level submerged underwater. So we're 100 feet down now. What is this? Susie, this is the tomb of Osiris. But with determination and perseverance, they pressed on, determined to reveal the secrets hidden within. The Osiris shaft is an archaeological marvel, showcasing the remarkable efforts undertaken to unveil its hidden depths. Picture the immense undertaking to install modern pumping equipment and drain the water, revealing the mysteries concealed within. Delving into its three levels, descending deep into the earth, reveals a captivating tapestry of ancient architecture, burial customs, and potentially hidden treasures. Upon initial exploration, the intricate design of the shaft itself captivates observers. Each level serves a distinct yet enigmatic purpose, offering a glimpse into ancient engineering prowess. At the lowest level lies a chamber partly submerged in water, housing a substantial stone sarcophagus. This imagery evokes vivid parallels with the ancient Egyptian concept of the underworld, hinting at a profound symbolism woven into the very fabric of the Giza Plateau. Moving to the second level, the discovery of six empty burial shafts has continued to confuse archaeologists. I found six rooms cut in the rock, two red granite sarcophagus, and pottery, and bones. The absence of contents raises compelling questions about looting or the intended function of these shafts. Despite the absence of inscriptions, scattered artifacts such as pottery shards and stone fragments provide invaluable clues, potentially dating the Osiris shaft to the New Kingdom period. Among the most touching discoveries are the mummified remains found in smaller chambers adjacent to the central coffin. 
These intimate encounters with ancient inhabitants offer a rare glimpse into their daily lives, dietary habits, and perhaps even causes of death. Central to the narrative is the legendary figure of Osiris, the ancient Egyptian god associated with the afterlife, death, and rebirth. The Osiris shaft, linked to this deity, symbolizes his journey through death and ascension to the role of afterlife ruler. The possibility of the shaft serving as a venue for initiation rites, mirroring Osiris's transformative journey, adds to the spiritual significance of its construction. Moreover, the alignment of the Osiris shaft with celestial bodies associated with Osiris and the afterlife suggests a profound connection, bridging the earthly realm with the heavens above. This spiritual dimension blends seamlessly with the physical structure, echoing themes found in ancient texts such as the Pyramid Texts and the Book of the Dead. In essence, the Osiris shaft is beyond mere archaeological curiosity. It represents a union of practicality and spiritualism. Its architecture not only reflects the ingenuity of ancient craftsmen, but also serves as a tangible link to the spiritual beliefs and rituals of a bygone civilization etched deep within the limestone bedrock. As you approach, you're met with a rectangular opening signaling the beginning of your journey downward. It's not just any hole in the ground. It's a carefully, meticulously crafted vertical shaft plunging about 10 meters deep. One can only imagine the sheer determination it took to chisel away all that limestone using tools crafted from tougher stones, metals, and even ropes and wooden supports. The first chamber you encounter appears rather plain, lacking in flashy decorations or treasures. Yet this simplicity may hold deeper significance. It could serve as a waiting area or a space for preparatory rituals before delving into more profound depths below. But the real wonder unfolds as you progress to the second level. Here, another shaft descends a further 20 meters, leading to a more complexly designed chamber. These shafts might have been intended for actual burials or symbolically represent the journey to the afterlife. However, it's the third level where things take a dramatic turn. Descending another shaft, you find yourself 30 meters below the surface, greeted by a huge stone coffin at the chamber's heart. This isn't merely a burial site. It symbolizes Osiris's tomb, especially touching, as the chamber is partly filled with water, evoking themes of rebirth and purification from Egyptian mythology. Deep within the Great Pyramid of Giza lies the King's Chamber, a wonder of ancient Egyptian architecture that continues to captivate historians and visitors alike. Its walls and ceiling are crafted from massive granite blocks, highlighting the remarkable craftsmanship of ancient builders. The impressive engineering of the Grand Gallery seamlessly connects to the marvel of the King's Chamber deep within the Great Pyramid of Giza. Marvels of Ancient Egyptian Architecture This discovery, in my opinion, is the most important discovery on the 21st century. The Grand Gallery has a corridor stretching an impressive 47 meters long and towering 8.6 meters high. This majestic passageway isn't just a simple walkway, it's proof of the excellent abilities of ancient Egyptian builders. Egyptologists often explain how the massive stone blocks were moved by placing them on wet sand, and pushing them along. While this method might work at ground level, it becomes impractical when you're 350 feet above the ground, like you are in the King's Chamber. The King's Chamber itself is a marvel showcasing the Egyptians' advanced knowledge of materials and construction techniques. Carved from red granite transported over 800 kilometers from Aswan, the chamber's walls alone speak volumes about the civilization's monumental feats in logistics and engineering. Measuring about 10.47 meters by 5.234 meters and standing 5.974 meters tall, the chamber's dimensions likely hold symbolic significance, possibly aligning with celestial or phonetic principles. Yet, if we merely scratch the surface, we might miss its deeper meanings entirely. At the heart of the chamber rests a red granite tomb, presumed to be the final resting place of Pharaoh Khufu, However, no human remains have been discovered within it, adding to the chamber's mystery. The sarcophagus bears signs of age, hinting at the millennia that have passed since its creation. 
its positioning suggests it was placed during the pyramid's construction, underscoring the serious planning involved. Above the chamber, a system of five relieving chambers neatly spreads the pyramid's weight, safeguarding the space below. This demonstrates the ancient builder's civilized grasp of structural integrity. Additionally, two narrow shafts extending to the pyramid's exterior were initially thought to provide ventilation but may hold deeper symbolic significance, possibly aligning with stars or celestial phenomena relevant to Khufu's journey after death. Moving on to another intriguing aspect of the pyramid, the Queen's Chamber holds its mysteries. Despite its name, scholars believe it wasn't intended as a burial chamber for a queen. Its unique features and lack of burial artifacts have led to various theories about its purpose. Located centrally within the pyramid, but at a lower elevation than the king's chamber, the queen's chamber offers a captivating discovery. This fascinating space is characterized by its spaciousness and pointed roof. One of its most puzzling features is a large niche in the eastern wall, towering at about 4.6 meters high. The purpose of this recess remains a subject of speculation, with theories ranging from housing statues to serving ritualistic functions related to the pharaoh's journey into the afterlife. The construction technique of the chamber's roof mirrors that of the king's chamber, suggesting deliberate architectural choices to ensure stability and possibly convey symbolic meanings. Recent technological advancements have shed new light on the queen's chamber. Techniques like infrared thermography and muon radiography have provided insights into its construction and potential hidden chambers, fueling further exploration and debate. Hidden within the Great Pyramid are its strange air shafts and the buried chamber. These narrow passageways, extending from the king's and queen's chambers to the pyramid's exterior, present a fascinating puzzle, offering glimpses into the ancient builder's ingenuity and possibly deeper symbolic significance. The air shafts in the pyramid are incredibly small, measuring just about 20 by 20 centimeters. They twist and turn precisely towards the sky, pointing to specific areas in the heavens that were very important in ancient Egyptian beliefs. Wayman Dixon, an engineer, stumbled upon these shafts in 1872, adding another layer of intrigue to the pyramid's already mysterious history. Initially, it was thought that these shafts provided ventilation for the chambers, but that theory doesn't quite fit, especially for the ones in the Queen's Chamber, which don't even reach the outside. Instead, many think there's a more mystical explanation. Some suggest these shafts were deliberately aligned with stars or constellations like Orion and Sirius, connecting the Pharaoh with the gods of the afterlife. But the mystery deepens further. Modern technology, like robotic cameras, has explored these shafts, revealing hidden doors and chambers inside. This raises the question, what were the ancient engineers trying to achieve? Adding to the intriquy is the subterranean chamber, a rough, unfinished space carved into the bedrock. Unlike the polished upper chambers of the pyramid, this one is rugged and unfinished, leading to speculation about its original purpose. Was it meant to be Khufu's tomb, a symbolic underworld, or perhaps a practical defense against flooding? There are plenty of theories, but none have fully unraveled the mystery. The chamber's incomplete state has sparked all sorts of ideas about why it was abandoned mid-construction. When scientists discovered the Big Void, they were both thrilled and shocked. The discovery of the Big Void was made possible through muon radiography, a technique that uses naturally occurring particles called muons. These particles can pass through solid stone, allowing researchers to peek inside the pyramid without causing any damage. By detecting changes in muon density, scientists were able to identify the space we now know as the Big Void. This breakthrough was the result of international collaboration as part of the SCAN Pyramids Project, bringing together experts from around the world to uncover the pyramid's deepest secrets. So, what do we know about the Big Void? Well, it sits above the Grand Gallery, a known hollow space within the pyramid, and extends for at least 30 meters, roughly matching the length of the gallery below. Its size suggests it played a significant role in the pyramid's design, but its exact purpose remains a captivating puzzle. 
every new finding inside the Great Pyramid adds another part to the puzzle of unraveling one of humanity's most astonishing accomplishments. The Big Void isn't merely an empty area. It serves as a reminder of the unresolved mysteries and untold tales of the past. If proven true, it could potentially push back the history of the Sphinx to a much earlier era. The Controversial Age of the Great Sphinx In the 1990s, Robert M. Schoch, a geologist from Yale University, proposed a theory regarding the age of the Great Sphinx of Giza. His observation of unusual erosion patterns surrounding the Sphinx hinted at a different history than previously believed. Rather than the expected wind and sand erosion, Schoch detected signs that water may have played a significant role, suggesting the Sphinx could be much older than commonly thought. Graham Hancock, a renowned British author known for his exploration of ancient mysteries, was puzzled by Schock's theory and began supporting it in the early 1990s. This challenged the traditional dating of the Sphinx, which Egyptologists estimate to be around 4,500 years old, lacking concrete evidence to support this timeline. Independent researcher John Anthony West also joined Schock in advocating for an older age of the Sphinx. Schoch's theory suggests that the Sphinx may have existed during a time when Egypt experienced heavy rainfall, estimated to be around 8,000 to 10,000 BCE. This concept of water erosion shaping the Sphinx's features presents an exciting yet controversial idea. Traditionally, archaeologists dated the Sphinx to approximately 2,500 BCE during Pharaoh Khafre's reign, based on its location in the Giza Pyramid complex and stylistic comparisons with other artifacts from that period. However, if Shok's theory holds, the Sphinx's origins could date back to the Neolithic era, challenging established historical timelines. Shok conducted a comprehensive analysis, comparing the erosion patterns on the Sphinx with those on other ancient limestone sites exposed to rainfall. This approach aimed to validate the water erosion theory by aligning observed patterns with known geological and archaeological evidence. Critics of Shosh's theory proposed alternative explanations, suggesting that fluctuations in groundwater or chemical processes unique to the Giza area could have caused the erosion. Additionally, archaeological findings around the Sphinx seemingly contradict Shaka's hypothesis leaving some aspects of the Sphinx's history still uncertain. The debate surrounding the Sphinx's age underscores the complexity of interpreting historical and geological evidence. Shosh's interdisciplinary approach highlights the importance of considering multiple perspectives when exploring ancient mysteries, though some pieces of the puzzle remain elusive. Graham Hancock presents a fascinating idea about a civilization from ages ago, long before the familiar ones we study in history books, such as the Egyptians, Sumerians, and the Indus Valley dwellers. He proposes that this ancient society thrived many millennia earlier and might have met its end due to a colossal comet collision around 10,000 BC. An entire advanced culture vanished in an instant, leaving behind only fragments of its existence. What's even more interesting is Hancock's belief that this civilization wasn't confined to one region it had a global reach. He suggests that after the disaster, survivors spread far and wide, spreading their knowledge and influencing the emergence of other ancient cultures. Hancock delves into myths and oral traditions from various corners of the globe, not dismissing them as mere folklore, but considering them as potential historical accounts. For instance, he finds the flood myths across different cultures compelling seeing them as possibly rooted in a real cataclysmic event that shaped this lost civilization. One compelling explanation Hancock offers involves floods of icy meltwater triggered by the comet impacts, cascading from the North American ice cap into the Atlantic Ocean. This disrupted the Gulf Stream, a vital component of the Earth's climate regulation, leading to sudden and drastic cooling. Hancock's enthusiasm for astronomy shines through as he highlights how ancient structures like the Giza pyramids and the Sphinx align with specific stars and constellations. He argues that this alignment isn't random but reflects an advanced understanding of celestial phenomena. Moreover, 
he explores the notion that these ancient people grasped the concept of the procession of the equinoxes, a gradual shift in Earth's rotation over a 2600-year cycle, which would suggest an impressive comprehension of the cosmos far ahead of their time. Central to Hancock's captivating theory is the awe-inspiring architectural feats of ancient civilizations. He marvels at structures like the Egyptian pyramids, Stonehenge, and the megalithic sites in South America, seeing them as evidence of advanced engineering and architectural prowess. According to Hancock, the precision and intricacy of these constructions imply a depth of knowledge and technological skill often underestimated by contemporary perspectives. Engineering and Mathematical Precision in Ancient Structures Consider the remarkable precision of stone cutting at Pumaponku in Bolivia, highlighted by Hancock. The cuts are so exact that it seems they had access to incredibly advanced tools. And when it comes to constructing colossal buildings, Hancock is intrigued by the methods they must have employed. He marvels at how these massive stones were fitted together with such accuracy often without any mortar, and wonders about the techniques used to move and position stones weighing several tons. This isn't just ordinary heavy lifting. It demonstrates profound expertise in engineering and possibly ingenious applications of leverage and pulley systems. But Hancock's fascination doesn't stop there. He's also captivated by the mathematical and geometrical insights revealed by these structures. He discusses the use of the golden ratio and precise angular measurements, indicative of a sophisticated grasp of mathematics and geometry. Take, for instance, the Great Pyramid of Khufu. Its precise alignment, perfectly leveled base, and exact angles of its sides astound Hancock, suggesting a far more advanced understanding of geometry and engineering than previously assumed. Then, there are the monumental constructions in Mesoamerica, like the Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan and the Mayan pyramids, which Hancock highlights for their architectural complexity, urban planning, and use of large stone blocks. To him, these features indicate a level of technological proficiency and knowledge far surpassing what was conventionally believed possible for ancient cultures. In essence, Hancock examines these ancient structures and suggests that there's more to their story. He proposes that these civilizations possessed a depth of knowledge and skill in construction, engineering, and mathematics that challenged our conventional understanding of ancient history. Consider, for instance, the symbolism shared between the Maya and Aztec calendars, suggesting a shared heritage. And when Hancock looks at the layout of Teotihuacan in Mexico, he sees a reflection of our solar system's planetary orbits, hinting at a detailed understanding of astronomy and space among its builders. Even Stonehenge in England is seen by Hancock as an astronomical observatory due to its alignment with the solstices, indicating a deep understanding of celestial movements. Likewise, the Pyramid of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza, casting a shadow resembling a serpent during the equinoxes, is viewed as a sophisticated means of tracking the sun's path, further demonstrating advanced astronomical knowledge. Hancock also explores the concept of precession, a gradual wobble in Earth's rotation that completes a cycle every 26,000 years. He examines how the Giza pyramids align with Orion's belt and how the Sphinx aligns with the Leo constellation during the age of Leo around 10,500 BCE. He believes these alignments were intentional, indicating that ancient people understood this complex astronomical phenomenon. In essence, Hancock is deeply puzzled by the notion that ancient structures worldwide were not simply built without purpose. He suggests that they were intentionally aligned with stars, constellations, and celestial events, revealing a much deeper understanding of astronomy than commonly acknowledged. Furthermore, Hancock delves into the fascinating concept of the Kemet theory, which proposes the existence of an advanced civilization that emerged during a period of significant climatic changes around 12-1500 years ago. This civilization, according to proponents of the theory, possessed unparalleled knowledge and technology, 
particularly in astronomy, medicine, mathematics, and potentially other fields yet to be rediscovered by modern science. The proponents of the Kemet theory point to various pieces of evidence to support their claims, including geological irregularities and similarities in ancient myths, religious practices, and architectural styles across different cultures. They argue that after a catastrophic event, survivors of this advanced civilization disperse it globally, disseminating their knowledge and contributing to the pseudonyms of complex civilizations and monumental architecture in various parts of the world. The Kemet theory presents a captivating narrative of a civilization covered in mystery and wonder, with echoes of its achievements found in the monumental structures of ancient Egypt, particularly in the engineering marvels of the pyramids. The gentle alignment of these structures, along with their massive scale and complex design, poses puzzling questions about the capabilities of ancient civilizations and challenges conventional archaeological interpretations. Delving deeper into speculation, some supporters of the Kemet theory propose that this ancient civilization might have utilized unfamiliar forms of energy or technology. These ideas range from using sound waves and vibrations for cutting stone and levitation to more mysterious concepts involving the manipulation of electromagnetic fields or other unseen natural forces. The dawn of the early dynastic period marked a significant turning point. Egypt, previously divided into upper and lower regions, was brought together under the rule of King Narmer, a crucial moment immortalized on the renowned Narmer Palette. This unification gave rise to the first dynasty and paved the way for a cultural rebirth. The development of hieroglyphic writing, a complex system enabling detailed record-keeping and administration, emerged. Magnificent royal tombs, such as those at Abydos and Saqqara, began to adorn the landscape. Religious rituals became more elaborate, with deities like Ra and Osiris gaining prominence, while the construction of the first pyramids, including Djoser's Step Pyramid, designed by Imhotep, began to soar towards the skies. The Old Kingdom, celebrated as the era of the pyramids, witnessed the pinnacle of the construction of these iconic structures. As time passed, later generations of ancient Egyptians Inheritors of the culture that originally built the Giza complex found it necessary to restore and modify these ancient monuments. The Great Pyramid of Giza, an astonishing feat of engineering and architecture, stood as a testament to the pharaoh's divine status. Art and culture flourished during this time, with the Sphinx of Giza, a monumental statue combining the body of a lion with the head of a pharaoh, embodying the period's artistic boldness. However, this golden age eventually waned. Political instability and the dispersion of power led to the first intermediate period, a period of decline and unrest. From this chaos emerged the Middle Kingdom, characterized by reunification and stability under rulers like Mentuhotep II. A cultural revival ensued, with literary works such as The Tale of Sinuhe, reflecting a more realistic portrayal of life. Trade flourished and defenses were strengthened, signaling a kingdom more secure and prosperous than ever before. The new kingdom ushered in an era of imperial expansion, with Egypt's influence stretching from modern-day Syria to Sudan. This era saw renowned pharaohs such as Hatshepsut, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and Rameses II. Akhenaten's revolutionary attempt at religious reform Introducing the worship of Aten as the sole deity marked a brief yet significant departure from traditional beliefs. Architectural accomplishments soared to new heights with the construction of grand temples at Karnak and Luxor and the establishment of the Valley of the Kings. Following the New Kingdom, Egypt entered a period of decline. The Third Intermediate Period was characterized by political fragmentation while the late period witnessed foreign invasions and rule by Nubians, Assyrians, and Persians. The final stages of ancient Egyptian civilization saw the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty and Roman rule, ultimately marking the end of a civilization that had endured for thousands of years. The timeline of traditional Egyptology unveils a civilization that's incredibly deep and complex. From their amazing buildings to the detailed beliefs in their gods and how their society worked, 
the ancient Egyptians made a lasting impact on history. Their tale, intertwined with the lush lands of the Nile, still grips and educates us, showing how amazing this civilization was. Despite the decline of ancient Egypt, its profound influence on history remains evident through the celestial knowledge preserved in structures like the megalithic temples of Malta. Unveiling Ancient Celestial Wisdom Randall Carlson's research into the astronomical alignments of ancient megalithic structures is like peeling away layers of history to uncover the profound celestial knowledge of past civilizations. Let's take a closer look at the megalithic temples of Malta, such as Hagar Kim and Menidra, dating back to around 3600-3200 BC. These structures aren't just old, they're some of the oldest freestanding buildings globally. What's truly remarkable is how they reveal a detailed understanding of celestial motions, especially regarding the sun's cycle. Imagine observing these temples, particularly during the equinoxes. It's like witnessing a cosmic ballet orchestrated by ancient architects. At Menadra, during the equinoxes, sunlight streams through a specific opening illuminating an inner stone slab with incredible precision. This attention to detail showcases that the builders weren't just piling up rocks. They were carefully aligning them with celestial occurrences, marking seasonal changes with architectural finesse. But it's not only about alignments. The architectural layout itself is astonishing. Many myths and legends from different cultures hint at events related to these stars. The temple's arrangement appears carefully designed to match with the sun's position during significant times of the year. For example, the main axis of Hagar Kim almost perfectly lines up with the sun's rise during the solstices, revealing a remarkable understanding of solar movements. And then there's the construction process. We are talking about massive stones, each weighing tons, positioned with such precision to correspond with celestial events. This required not just raw strength, but also advanced knowledge of astronomy and building techniques. Moreover, they utilize local limestone, abundant in Malta. The complexity of these temples extends beyond their size and stone weight. They feature multiple chambers, altars, and intricate carvings, all contributing to a civilized architectural design. The arrangement of semicircular chambers linked by a central corridor, aligned with specific astronomical events, showcases their advanced planning. Moving to the Pyramids of Giza, especially the Great Pyramid, their alignment with the cardinal points of the compass is awesome. The Great Pyramid, constructed for Pharaoh Khufu around 2580-2560 BC, aligns almost perfectly with true north, south, east, and west. The northern side aligns within a fraction of a degree of true north, an extraordinary feat given the era the construction techniques remain a mystery. The ancient Egyptians likely utilized stars or the sun's path to determine true north, implying advanced surveying methods and a profound understanding of angles and straight lines. It's truly remarkable, considering the limited tools and technology available at that time. Now, let's talk about one of the most famous ancient structures, Stonehenge, situated on the Salisbury Plain in England. One of the most notable things about Stonehenge is how it lines up with the summer solstice. On the longest day of the year, the sun rises directly over the heel stone, just outside the main circle of stones. As the sun rises, its rays shine through the entrance and brighten the center of the circle. Stonehenge also aligns with the winter solstice and possibly other celestial events. During the winter solstice, the setting sun is framed by the massive stone trilithons, and some experts suggest it may even align with lunar events, adding another layer to the understanding of how the ancient builders comprehended the movements of both the sun and the moon. Now let's consider how Stonehenge was constructed. The final structure we see today was completed around 2500 BC, but it was built gradually over approximately 2500 years. The main part of the monument consists of large sarsen stones arranged in a circle, along with smaller blue stones brought from Wales, a distance of over 150 miles. And then there's the arrangement of the stones themselves. They're placed in a specific geometric pattern with an outer circle, an inner horseshoe shape, and those tron structures. 
the precision in the layout and orientation of the stones indicates a deep understanding of both geometry and astronomy. It's not just a random collection of rocks. Everything at Stonehenge serves a purpose and holds significance, prompting us to wonder about the knowledge and intentions of the ancient builders. When considering what's still hidden beneath the ground, Stonehenge may well be the largest megalithic site ever created on Earth. The ancient builders used clever techniques, probably rolling these huge stones on logs or dragging them on sleds made from tree trunks. This required a massive group effort with hundreds of people working together. A vast number of individuals came together, each contributing to this enormous undertaking. It wasn't just about being strong, it needed careful planning, teamwork, and social organization. This shows that these early societies were much more complex than we usually think. When we consider recent discoveries, such as scientists unlocking the secret tunnel inside Egypt's ancient Sphinx, it highlights the remarkable capabilities and creativity of these ancient civilizations. It's proof of their enduring legacy and the mysteries still waiting to be unraveled. What do you think about the secret tunnel inside Egypt's ancient Sphinx? Let us know your opinion in the comments below.